Thanks for joining us on Shannon's Club TV, where we retrace the heritage of admired but sometimes overlooked cars on Australian roads and racetracks. In each episode, we take an up-close look at our feature car with a well-preserved owner's example and get the latest market news from the Shannon's auctions team. So let's kick things off with the Australian sports car that transformed the kit car into the definitive production model, the Bolwell Nagari. The Bowl Nagari holds the distinction of being Australia's most successful production car developed from scratch by an independent Australian manufacturer. During its four-year model run, an estimated 118 examples were built. Bowl started life building fiberglass sports car kits. The Nagari was even launched as the Mark 8 kit at the end of 1969, ready for anything from a Ford Kent 4 to a Holden 6, depending on an owner's whim and finances. The Mark 8 only became a turnkey factory built model to protect the integrity and quality of Bowles latest V8 developments. The Nagari name, an Aboriginal word for something that flows, was applied from 1970 to distinguish the factory V8 models from those before it. The Nagari with its V8 grunt and lightweight seemed ideal as a race special. It appeared to provide the starting point for any number of engine and suspension upgrades, but Mark, it wasn't as easy as that. No, I mean, it was a beautiful looking car, but it did have some engineering issues for racing. One of the, the real problems was the front suspension geometry. You know, it created a lot of bump steer, yeah. particularly when racers fitted wider wheels and tyres. So what a lot of them did was either, you know, build their own custom made front suspensions, or some guys put late model Tirana front ends under them to fix that problem. The other issue was it had quite a short wheelbase relative to its track width. Yes. So it's tended to lack a little bit of directional stability at high speed. Uh, and that made the handling a little bit twitchy on the limit, which was also something that uh, Nagari racers used to complain and about. And there was that very heavy live rear axle oh, which you yeah. had to keep tied down as yes, well. Yes, yes, so you had the unsprung to sprung weight ratio. Exactly. The other thing, a big factor, was heat. Because yes. if you were racing the coupe, yeah. nice little compact fiberglass car with this huge V8 engine in it, the heat soak from that was unbearable for some of these guys. So some of the racers actually switched to the roadster body and they solved all those problems. But you know, despite all these issues, the Bowl and Nagari was a very successful race car. It won a lot of races. Yes, mm. and was very accessible too. Mm. Mm. After Graham Bowl worked for Lotus while his brother Campbell took care of business, it's often assumed that the Nagari was a Lotus Elan copy. Although both shared a backbone chassis, the resemblance ended there. Because earlier Bowell kits exploited plentiful Holden parts, the brothers wanted to use Holden's brand new compact V8. Except Holden was planning its own fiberglass sports car, the Tirana GTRX, so the answer was no. A deal was then brokered with Ford. The factory Nagari was initially defined by its imported 302 Windsor V8 and top loader gearbox. Housing a V8 within the Y section at the front of the Nagari chassis with a local heavy duty live axle at the rear ultimately demanded a very different approach to the Elan. Ford then unexpectedly replaced the imported Windsor V8 with the much heavier locally built Cleveland. Adapting the Nagari chassis and body to the bigger engine pushed borrow resources to the limit. When tough new safety requirements followed soon after, the Bowell brothers were smart enough to quit while they were ahead. Although the Nagari road car's time ended in 1974, Mark, it seemed to gain a second win on the track. Yeah, it sure did. And at one stage, it was in contention to win Australia's premier sports car title. The large number of Bowell Nagaris that competed in production sports car racing, or prod sports, in the 1970s highlights the broad appeal and affordable race winning performance of this proudly Australian made V8 powered supercar. The fiberglass body Nagari was a common sight in both coupe and roadster body styles on Australian racetracks, where it was competitive at club, state and national level. With all that V8 grunt in a car that weighed just over 900 kilograms, the Nagari sub 15 second quarter mile performance in standard trim was impressive for its day. By the time a racer had sorted out the suspension and added bigger brakes, wide wheels and tyres and a full house 400 brake horsepower race engine, it was a very potent track weapon. Joe, Holden's decision not to supply Bolwell with its uh, compact V8, you know, that must have been a free kick for Ford boss Bill Burke 
Because he was pushing Ford's high-performance image really hard at the time, wasn't he? Well, the, the company's philosophies couldn't have been more different. Mm. Holden was still hampered by that no competition policy yeah. from the US. Mm. They sort of got under it, but maybe seeing a bowl flying around with a Holden V8 under the bonnet was probably crossing the edge a little bit, yeah. as well as the, the fact that they were going that way themselves. Sort of, <laughs> uh, <laughs> secretly. Uh, Bill Burke, however, didn't have those restrictions, and he was still translating Ford's total performance into the super roof mm, philosophy in right. 1969. That was mm. all launched then. And that philosophy was not only about the cars, but all the hot up bits that they offered. Yeah, and I mean, there, were, there were catalogues. There were catalogues, yeah. yeah. You could buy this and that and right. really do up your car. And that was before ADRs were a problem mm. and all that sort of thing. So a group of guys coming and saying, we want your engines yeah. to power our sports car. Perfect. <laughs> Fitted perfectly with the philosophy. Yeah, no brainer. Mm. The Nagari never won the nation's premier sports car crown, the Australian Sports Car Championship. But that was largely due to technical rules, which for the majority of the championship's near two decade existence, catered primarily for big banger Can-Am and Le Mans style cars designed purely for competition use. The Nagari's best chance came in 1978, when a rule change favouring production-based road legal sports cars allowed Ross Bond to get within a handful of points of winning the national title. However, by then the Nagari had been out of production for several years and general interest in the championship was in sharp decline. Even so, the Nagari enjoyed great success as a prod sports racer throughout the 1970s and proved that Australia could build a homegrown V8 powered sports car that was more than a match for many overseas rivals. Don't forget, you can join the conversation on the Shannon's Club forums with a host of interesting topics. My name's John Peters and the car is a Nagari Sports and a chassis number 50. Uh, we built that heart in 1972. I had it about three and a half years and I bought it in pieces. The car was originally a coupe. It had been in an accident and I bought it as a rolling chassis with bits and pieces. Uh, I got a new sports body made for it and rebuilt the whole car. It's all Ford equipment. It's a 302 Windsor. They all came with Ford engines. The early ones had 302 Windsors and then they changed to the Cleveland because Ford stopped supplying them. It's been tweaked a little bit, not much. It's pretty, pretty original. I've got a slightly um, warmer cam in it and I've got Edelbrock uh, alloy heads and manifolds. But other than that, it's pretty standard. It's got a top loader ball speed gearbox and the standard Ford diff. The wheels look very familiar to the Lamborghini Mira wheels and that's because um, the Bowell brothers fancied those wheels and thought they'd make something very similar. Bowell built 100 coupes and 18 sports, so it is quite rare. There are a couple of things. One, I love V8s. I love the sound and the burble of V8s. And I also like light cars because you get great power and speed and great torque out of them and it's a perfect combination. Well, I love the lines of it. I think it is the most beautiful looking car. And if they made them this shape today, I'm sure they'd sell. I mean, I think it's a beautiful, classic shape and it stands the test of time. And now Shannon's National Auctions Manager, Chris Borobin, joins us with the latest on the Bowl and the Gary. Okay, Hi, Chris. Hey, Welcome to the show, mate. Thank you. Uh, the Bowell Nagari, you know, given that this came from what was originally a kit car manufacturer, there seems to be now a very clear distinction between those early kit cars and the Nagari. It was a really different model, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Mm. It, there is a, you know, we, we've seen in the last few years there's really good, strong following for Nagaris. And I, I, look, I'm not sure if it's just a Nagari. I think there's good following in Australia for Australian built cars and specials, and I think the Nagari sure. really, um, you know, forms part of it that. Sort of epitomises yeah, that it era, does. doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. 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 And I think there was a clear point where, if you had a Nagari, you could paint it any colour, put any trim in it, put wide wheels on it, and mm -hmm. what have you. Maybe ten years ago, 
people started to realise the original factory spec started to matter. Yeah. And yeah. instead of being a car that was heavily personalised, we're now mm -hmm. seeing more cars consistent with what the factory intended in the first place. And yeah. now that car's got a clear identity, people are saying, I want an Agari. Yeah. Yeah, Is it true? Uh, we are seeing that. I think mm -hmm. uh, for a few of the examples we've seen come through the auctions in the last few years, uh, you know, that is a trend. I think with the muscle car craze that we have seen, yeah. um, people have wanted to probably see some of the Nagaris taken back to mm. how they left the factory. So, yeah. uh, Which is exactly what's yeah. been happening in classic muscle car scene yeah, exactly as well. Right. Exactly right. Yeah. Exactly. We, we saw the uh, the car had a, a coupe body style and of course the, the Roadster. The Roadster, yeah. Uh, Roadsters generally command a premium over a coupe or a hardtop. Is that what happens in Nagari or is it different? I. I don't think I've really seen that. I mean, yes, I mean, there are much lesser numbers built in the Roadsters, um, uh, but I think people still also love the, the coupe so Beautiful much. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I don't think we have seen the, the really a difference between the, mm. the Roadsters and the coupes. I think they're virtually on par. Okay. Yep. So, Chris, looking at a good future, worth putting money into an Agari these days? Because there's some still around that need money's putting into them. Mm. Yeah, uh, look, I think it is. You know, I think from, from an Australian history point of view, absolutely, it's something that people and, should look at. And the overall advice would be keep it factory. Keep it as close to original as possible because I think, as we, we've said, you know, not uh, two Nagaris left the factory looking the same. So they're all individual cars. <laughs> yes. They all yes. look different. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So you keep them within those parameters. I think so, yep. Thanks, yeah. Chris. And remember, you can get all the latest auction news on the Shannon's Club website. If you'd like your own image of the Bowell Nagari in competition, visit autopix.com.au. Joe, the Bowell Nagari, I mean, I've still got a real affection for that car. It's almost a shame that we, we lost it. Well, you look at 1974, Mark, and... Um, if Leyland couldn't keep the P76 factory open with everybody that worked there and the great hopes that that car had, um, I'm not sure how you could expect anyone would really uh, shed a tear over the Nagari being mm. lost to the world. But I think as an independent company, they really proved from their own ability and from their own drive that they're well worth supporting. But I think uh, they were clever enough to work out that Australians were more interested in having a swimming pool mm. or outdoor furniture. Yeah, because they branched out into all sorts and, of stuff. And did they? very well yeah. and, and eventually did McDonald's fit outs and all sorts of things like mm. that. They kept the toe in the water for a little while with the VW Golf based kit car that they did. Mm. But I think that was just uh, the last uh, semblance of that enthousi enthusiasm they had for cars, but they had their sites focused on what really mattered. And I think you've got to ask whether there was a golden opportunity lost by the country, not just Bowl at mm. that point. So where do you think the Nagari sits on a global scale? We talk about Chevy Corvettes, we talk about AC Cobras. Is it in that sort of area? Well, a lot of people would like to make those comparisons, but if mm. we're being realistic, no. The Corvette was a proper production sports car with mm. specific parts made for it. Uh, AC Cobra was a production car that had a transplant, but it was still a mainstream AC production car. I think the closest was probably the TVR Griffith. Mm. But I think uh, Bowl was closer to making that next transition. You know, mm. they'd shown that they'd done a really great job using existing parts. I think they are ready to make the transition where they could have been Australia's Corvette mm. or uh, at that level but it just didn't happen. Yeah, yeah, it was a real shame. Well, we hope you've enjoyed this nostalgic V8 blast with the fabulous Bowell Nagari. We look forward to your company next time on Shannon's Club TV. Bye for now.